చైతన్య చరిత్ర అమృత్ అంతెలీల చాప్టర్ నైన్ డెలివరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ గోపినాథ్ పత్నాయక టెక్స్ట్ థర్టీన్ ఆన్ వర్డ్స్ ఇక దిన లోక సి ప్రభుర నివేదిల గోపిత గోపినాథేర అబ్బడ జాన చాంగే చడైలా అబ్బడ జాన సో వాట్ వన్ డే ద పీపుల్ ఇక్ లోక సి మెనీ పీపుల్ కేమ్ టు లాడ్ చైతన్య విత్ సమ్థింగ్ అన్యూజువల్ నార్మలీ చైతన్య మహాప్రభుస్ లైఫ్ వాస్ ఫిల్డ్ విత్ ఎక్స్టాటిక్ ఇమర్షన్ ఇన్ కృష్ణ అండ్ ఎక్స్టాటిక్ ఇనండేషన్ విత్ కృష్ణ విత్ అదర్ పీపుల్ సో దట్ ఈస్ ద ఎక్స్టాటిక్ లైఫ్ ఆఫ్ లాడ్ చైతన్య అండ్ వన్ డే దర్ వాజ్ అ స్లైట్ డిస్రప్షన్ విత్ దాట్ so during this process what did they say that the eldest son of gopinath patnaika changi chadaila that he was raised on a changa changa was a traditional device at that time used to execute people now this is a great great danger a disaster is about to befall someone and naturally devotees are desperately seeking some relief from the one who is the source of the all relief for them that is lord chaitanya na tale khadga pati tare upare dari dari be prabhu raksha kare na ya be tabe nistari be so they describing how deadly the situation is tale khadga pati tare upare dari be so below there is this he has been placed on a platform where that below an array of swords is there upare dari be and from there he will be thrown down and prabhu raksha kare na yabe tabe nistari be if you protect o oh lord then he will be saved now, traditionally there have been over the centuries there have been different means of executing people and different cultures have different ethos mm. so some people might have say lopping off the heads in recent times the some islamist terrorist organization extreme terrorist organization have publicly burnt or beheaded or shot people and made videos and this is barbaric and now this might also seem barbaric to us that somebody is being thrown down on a priest swords and the point is that two things firstly uh, there are some crimes that are so bad that execution is the only punishment to be given and we cannot be we cannot be tender food and live on tip to about that there is violent there is child abuse there is let's see if say the serial child abuse sexual abuse or there is multiple serial killing or whatever these are horrendous crimes and they need to be punished now while all crime while while certain crimes do deserve severe punishments um, there can be wrong doers who are also punished and that has to be considered carefully and this is a example of a person who whose crime was whose the punishment was not as proportional not proportionate to the crime and as it is a matter of and this dismay and disaster that something like this has been done at the same time we can't be all sentimental say how people are executed uh, that what purpose is being served is it just to give that person the consequences of their actions or it is also to send a message to society that actions have consequences and certain actions have serious consequences so nowadays 
in the age of political correctness we recoil against capital punishment and certainly we re many people recoil against capital punishment being administered in in graphic ways so for example in america nowadays it is that people are given poison pills but it's done in a three stage where the first first they are given a muscle relaxant so that when the poison is given to them and the poison starts acting then it doesn't create any sudden shock or sudden jolt in their body so that the whole idea is the observers are to be anesthetized so the so it doesn't become visually jolting although it is and even at the, at the level of physical manifestation the person doesn't uh, then suddenly have some violent fits or sudden collapses the person gradually sinks into that now is does that serve as the best deterrent for a crime that's open to question so sometimes having visually uh, graphic even horrific ways of of punishing to of giving the death sentence they may serve as stronger deterrents for other wrongdoers so in the french revolution the even the king and courtiers were guillotined and that was also very from today standards barbaric but the point is that we can't judge other cultures from our standards today sensitivity is and political correctness are given a very high premium and that was not the case in the past now uh, we could make a case of what is right and what is wrong and uh, what helps in deterring crime more and what helps in deterring crime less those are discussions that can be had but the key over here is that we can't we need to understand the cultural reference to understand uh the context for which particular actions are done so here gopnath patnaika is about to be executed and the devotees are begging that now so the visually graphic description the explicit description is wrote in chaitanya charitamrit serves to underscore the urgency of the situation that his death is imminent you please intervene and intervene urgently that if you don't intervene then he won't be saved and at the devotees are also conveying that we have come to you out of desperation out of because it's so urgent and we can't see any other alternative that's why we have come so the, this is not just for uh for this the vividness of the description is not to convey horror but to convey urgency of the situation text 15 savam she tomar sevak bhavanand rai tar putra tomar sevak e rakhi te yuyai So now, why, now so the question might come up: Why should the Lord intervene? Why should the Lord protect? Because He, Tomara Sev, Bhavanandra, is your servant, and so I'm she. It's interesting that so his family members are his amshas, are his associates, and they all deserve to be. They all deserve your protection because they are your servants. so specifically now bhavanarada rai son is in danger so please protect him text 16 prabhu kahe raja ke na kare taadan tabe se lok kahe sab vivaran normally whenever somebody is accused of some wrong doing and leaving some punishment lord chaitan uh, is the action itself might be graphic 
horrifying, but we also have to look at the context why that action is being done. And based on the context alone, we can understand mm, the understand the con action better. So they're asking, why is this punishment being given? And then the audience start, people start telling the full story. It's interesting here that the people who come to ask Lord Chaitanya's help in saving Gopinath Patnaika, Chaitanya Charitamrita has repeatedly described them as loka, not bhakta. So the significance of this, of course, with those people also having some bhakti, because that's why they have come to the Lord for protection. They have they have that level of faith at least that the Lord can intervene and protect. But um, the mood we will see as Lord Chaitanya will speak later is that the mood here is not uh, is to serve the Lord, not to demand from the Lord. That's what is that's the mood of Chaitanya Charitamrut, and in that consonance of that mood. We could say that here, at least till this point, at least the word loka is used. So devotees are those who they want to serve the Lord, and that's for the basis, that's the center point of their relationship with the with the Lord. But people in general may want, they will not never use that word, Oh Lord, you serve me, but that may be their mood. That you, what are you doing for me? The devotee's mood is, what am I doing for the Lord? Text 17. Kopinatha Patanai ke Ramananda Bhai Sarva Kala Hai Tenha Raja Vishayi. So here they're continuing the description of what's happened. So, so Gopinatha he's telling that Ramananda Bhai, as he's the brother of Ramananda Rai, he is son of Bhavananda Rai, he is Raja Vishayi. He is the treasurer for the king, Sarvakala. He has been, he's been, always been, he's been for a long time. It's not just a recent thing, but he has been in that post for a long, long time. That's being said over here. Amala Jatya Dandapate Tara Adhikar Amala Jatya Sa Sadhi Padi Ani Dravya Dila Raja Dwar. So, so he has to collect the taxes and the resources from Malajatya Dandapate. That is the Tara Adhika, that is his jurisdiction. Sadhi Padi uh, soliciting and collecting Ani Dravya Dila Raja Dwar. He is meant to give it to the king. At the door of the king, he is to give that ta that tax, that collected money, that revenue. So it seems at these times there is a system of um, governance which is uh, hierarchical with multiple levels in the hierarchy. The king cannot directly administer and the king has hierarchies uh, through which structures, through which the administration is done. And essentially the administration involves two main aspects. One is giving, uh, collecting and giving. So the collection of revenues has to be done through infrastructure and then the uh, offering of services from the state to the citizens has to be done some infrastructure. So he was in the Gopinath Patnaika was in the tax collection infrastructure. And here it is said over here. Dui Laksha Kahana Tara Thai Baki Jhaila. Dui Laksha Kahan Kauri Rajatta Magila. So what happened was there's at one time there was 200,000 kahanas was was less. So the currency here is in terms of conch shells. So that is less. It was remaining and then the king demanded it. 
that you are expected to give this much, but this is what you have given. So the denominations are different based on culture, specific modes of how currency is transmitted that varies from situation to situation. Text 20. Peha kahe thula dravya nahi ye gaani diba krame krame vechi kini dravya bhari ba Peha kahe nahi ye gaani diba So he said that thula dravya nahi I don't have any solid cash with me I don't have any money to pay this to you krame krame vechi kini dravya bhari ba Gradually I'll repay you this is often a situation that comes up in financial transactions that mm, there is no liquid cash available and therefore some wiggling room is required for repaying certain debts. So he says I will repay it gradually. And actually, I will sell some goods and I will fill your treasury by that way. Text 21. Now, this was the arrangement that had been done and he had been given that space. But something happened thereafter. Ghoda dasya barah lahamulya kari etabali ghoda ane rajadware dhari Ghoda dasya barah So, actually he said that he yeah, I got some horses. I'll sell my goods and I'll repay you. So one way I can pay you right now is I have some horses. I've got 10, 12 horses. You, you evaluate them. You set a price for them. And then Saying this, he brought his horses to the royal door. So now, the king often delegates. The king doesn't do everything oneself. So in the process of delegation, the king sent one of his sons who knew how to evaluate the prizes. While all kings, all royalty, especially all royal soldiers, everybody in royalty uses horses and other things. Not everybody is equally expert. Just like we might say about cars or computers. Today cars are the means we use for physical movement. And computers or phones are what we use for digital movement. So everybody may use this. But when something is to be bought, not everybody is expert enough to understand the technicalities of the features. And so if somebody is expert in our community also they know a lot about phones then we may ask them you know say i'm going to buy this phone are these features good enough or if somebody is going to give me this phone what price is reasonable for it so similarly here the king delegated the job of evaluating the horses and determining their prices to one of his sons and he ca called him for that purpose and he had his own associates his ministers and friends with whom he came say it's 23 say raja putra mulya kare ghataya gopina thera krodha haila mulya shuniya now this prince gave a very low price this is how often bargaining and business happens that sometimes the purchaser gives a very low price and the giver gives a very high price and then they bargain and then they come to a settlement. However, in some situations, especially if the person is in a big position of authority, like a king or a prince, and also if, uh, say, a starting price is given if the initial price that the purchaser offers is extremely low and especially if it's done in a context where the giver is obligated to give then 
see when they when we perceive something as unfair that is irritating when we perceive something as unavoidable that is also annoying but when you perceive something as both unfair and unavoidable then that is infuriating so so what happens is the emotion becomes much much more we can bear the unfair we can bear the unavoidable uh, even when it's not exact as uh, unpalatable un- 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 but when something is unfair and uh, something is unfair and unfavorable un- un- unavoidable then it becomes extremely difficult to bear so naturally crow the hela so gopinath acharya became furious on hearing this uh, price which he felt was uh, was outrageously low and thus he reacted in a way that was counterproductive for him text 24 sei rajya putre ra swabhava griva firaya urdhva mukhe bar bar iti uti chaya so and this prince had an idiosyncrasy that idiosyncrasy was that he griva phira he would move his neck upward urdhvamukhe toward the sky we all have certain quirks idiosyncrasy some people the idiosyncrasy are more prominent others are not that prominent but whatever it is we have these and especially if it is they are there in a person of prominent person who is prominent then those people are also sensitive about how they behave so uh, that they are different in a particular way and uh, that difference may make their make them hypersensitive iti utti chai so he would move his head again and again upward toward the sky he would look upward while he was talking and what we are what is idiosyncratic about us can become the butt of jokes can become the butt of taunts and then we might be sensitive or in even hypersensitive about those things and we have to be very careful that we don't goad others uh, we from our, from our side we need to ensure that we are not hypersensitive from other side they also have to be careful that they should not Uh, they should be sensitive enough to not go to the other person not even mention that to overlook that just like suppose we see somebody who has got some uh, scar on their face some maybe which indicates leprosy or something like that then uh, politeness means we don't certainly we don't stare at it politeness we may not even mention it and then we continue talking and uh, if somebody mentions then if you don't mind my asking Uh, can i ask you something personal maybe proceed uh, talking about it with some polite respectful preface which may act as a segue to that converse to bringing up that subject uh, now just mentioning that can also be impolite what to speak of deriding that and unfortunately that is what gopinath patnaika's son does out of anger 25 तारे निंदा करी कहे सगर वचने राजा कृपा करे ताटे भय नहीं मने सो तारे निंदा करी सो ही क्रिटिसाइज सो गोपीनाथ पटनायक क्रिटिसाइज दिस प्रिंस विथ प्राइड गर्व वचने सगर हिज वर्ड्स वर फिल्ड विथ प्राइड नॉर्मली समबडी वुड बी स्केयर्ड अबाउट स्केयर्ड टू क्रिटिसाइज द किंग सो members of the royal dynasty do have a lot of power and other and their ordinary citizens or even courtiers they will be afraid to provoke someone who is in a influential position but he was but gopinath was proud because raja krupa kare i am very dear to the king bhaya nahi mane therefore i don't have any fear of the 
prince because he felt that the king is more powerful naturally and thus he did something foolish instead of being polite and avoiding reference to his his idiosyncrasy the prince's idiosyncrasy gopinath spoke about it and criticized it 26 amar ghoda griva na firaye urdhva na hi chai tate ghoda ramulya ghati karite na yuyai this is my horses do not move their head upward into the sky and therefore you should not decrease their price so this was the gopinath uh, gopinath patnaik and then just mention the idiosyncrasy of the prince but also compared it with a horse and not only compared it he compared it in a devaluatory way so he said that mm, the when he said that you you, you that if the horses had that idiosyncrasy then you your uh, devaluing them would be justified that was the implication then say that because they don't have that idiosyncrasy so you shouldn't devalue them that means if they had that idiosyncrasy then you might have been able you could have uh, you might be justified in devaluing them and what is happening here uh, he's doing multiple wrongs first is just to uh, mention people's idiosyncrasy is is impolite to mention that in a disrespectful uh, disruptive way is even more problematic and to devalue people is based on their idiosyncrasies is even more problematic to compare a person to an animal is is problematic to compare a person to compare a king to a horse and to uh, compare compare a, and thereby devalue the king or a royal member of the fam- royal member of the royal family is even more problematic so there was provocation and this provocation got him into a lot of trouble what that trouble was we will discuss in our next sessions